The world-famous Pyramids of Giza are one of Egypt's top attractions. Myths, legends, and mysteries surround the pyramids. Historians and archaeologists from all over the world have been working to solve these mysteries for decades. How were the mighty pyramids built? Where did the stones come from? How were they transported? These are just a few questions for which there are still no answers. Much is still just speculation today. A mystery seems to be solved now, however. Researchers want to find out what the pyramids of Giza actually looked like when they were just completed all those years ago. These experts have spent many years combing through evidence to come to this conclusion, and today we'd like to present their findings to you. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end if you want to learn something about Egypt that we guarantee you've never heard before. The Pyramids of Giza are about half an hour's drive from central Cairo. There are six pyramids that the visitors of the area cannot miss. The giant pyramids are the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that are still standing, as all the others have faded away with time. They are one of the most famous wonders in the world ever created by man. In 1979, these pyramids were included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Originally, the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Cheops, was 146 meters high. It has a floor area of 53,000 square meters. That's the equivalent of nine soccer fields. Built around 4,500 years ago, the pyramids were intended to guide the pharaohs to the afterlife after their demise, according to the official story. Today, only the limestone of the pyramid can be seen from the outside. According to research, the pyramids were covered with polished sandstone. These ensured a smooth surface and gave the pyramids an even more noble and magnificent appearance. The polished sandstone has been eroded over time and used to construct other buildings. However, all those years ago, the pyramids would have looked truly remarkable, though they still look great today, just less so. One myth about the pyramids of Giza is that they were said to have been built by slaves. This rumor probably goes back to the Greek historian Herodotus, who discovered the building site in 450 BC. Priests told him that slaves had built the pyramids, but there is evidence that this cannot be true. Rather, the pyramids were built by highly skilled, well-fed workers. This is how historians found the remains of thousands of cattle bones in Giza. Thus, beef seems to have been a common food for the workers. The workers were therefore in good health while building the towers. In addition, tombs were discovered right next to the pyramids. These were the final resting place of the pyramid builders. There could not have been tombs of slaves that close to the pyramids because that honor would never have been granted to them. This proves that the people who built the pyramids were well-respected members of society, not slaves. Herodotus also spoke of at least 100,000 workers at the pyramids. According to the latest findings, this number is not correct either. It was closer to 10,000 people working on the pyramids. Among them were well-trained craftsmen, manual workers, and also cooks and cleaners. Whoever built the Cheops Pyramid it's amazing that the people of that time were even able to build such a huge structure. They did not yet own machines, cranes, or excavators. It has long been a mystery as to how the ancient Egyptians performed this unimaginable feat. Circumstantial evidence of other pyramids built later, however, gave archaeologists clues about the construction techniques. This evidence suggests that the pyramids were built using giant ramps. It is believed that the workers used these ramps to push or pull the massive stones, which were mostly made of limestone or granite, higher and higher until they finally reached the top of the pyramid. Archaeologists were able to find the remains of an ascending ramp north of Luxor at Hatnab. Near the ramp, there are post holes on the sides of two stairways with a gradient of up to 20%. This leads to the conclusion that large and heavy rocks were moved uphill on skids. International experts have no doubt that the ancient Egyptians used sleds and ropes to move the stones up ramps. The only uncertainty is how these ramps would have specifically been implemented and also how the stones would have been realistically moved by mere humans. There are also many engravings and pictorial representations in the stones 
that show the everyday life of the construction workers. This supports the assumption of the historians. If you wanted to build such a pyramid today, even the largest construction companies would reach their logistical limits. Over 2.6 million stone blocks would have to be transported, each weighing 2.5 tons. Procuring these stone blocks alone would be a giant task, and the construction of such a pyramid would take a good half a decade even today. Even if it can be assumed that the builders of the Great Pyramid used ramps, there are still unsolved mysteries. The higher a pyramid, the longer the ramps must have been. The Cheops Pyramid was 146 meters high. If the gradient is not to be greater than 5 to 20 percent, the ramp must have been so long that it ended up having 10 times the mass of the pyramid. It would have been about 2 miles long, or else it would have to wind around the pyramid, meaning that ramps couldn't have been the only means of getting blocks to the top of the pyramid. Therefore, the Egyptologist and engineer Frank Muller Romer assumes that there were ramps on all sides of the pyramid. All sides were working at the same time. In addition, the ramps must have been much steeper than assumed. Also, the boulders were pulled up using cable poles. The steeper the ramps, the less space they take up. Additionally, at least in the lower part of the ramp, you could build two ramps on the respective sides. Another possible theory is that the cattle bones that were previously mentioned may not have strictly been used to feed the workers. Instead, it's possible that the cattle could have pulled the blocks rather than humans or ropes. If you consider that a typical cow can pull around 7,000 pounds of weight, and we know that each of the blocks used to build the pyramids would have weighed around 5,500 pounds, it is reasonable to assume that the cattle could have been responsible for helping the humans to pull the blocks to the top. The problem is that it's not known what knowledge the ancient Egyptians actually had in terms of building expertise. In the 4th century AD, Alexander the Great destroyed almost all of the accumulated knowledge of the Egyptians. Therefore, it's not really known how much the Egyptians knew and with what knowledge they were able to build such gigantic pyramids. More recent pyramids suggest that the Egyptians were well ahead of their time. They had a gigantic knowledge advantage compared to other people of their time. This corresponds to the idea that the Cheops Pyramid is twice as tall as its base is wide. Conversely, this means that the ancient Egyptians must have known the number pi and worked with it. However, the number pi had not even been discovered yet, at least not as far as we know. The next point is that Giza is not just a pyramid. If one speaks of the pyramids of Giza, a total of six pyramids are being referred to. There are the three small pyramids of Queens, the Pyramid of Menkor, the Pyramid of Kefrin, and the Pyramid of Khufu, known as the Great Pyramid. Although all six pyramids are part of the pyramids of Giza, what is generally meant is, of course, the Great Pyramid. Many people who have not yet seen the pyramids of Giza with their own eyes but only in pictures believe that they are in the middle of the desert. Most of the pictures suggest this, but that is a fallacy. They stand on the edge of the desert, right next to buildings, hotels, and restaurants of the city of Giza. The pyramid served as a tomb for three pharaohs, according to historians and Egyptologists. However, the Great Pyramid was more than just a tomb, if it truly is a tomb. It was also a giant sundial. Built with great skill, shadows cast on markings in the stones could actually tell the hour of the day. And the pyramids could indicate solstices and equinoxes and help the Egyptians organize the year. The Egyptians used the stars to build the pyramid. The pyramids were built with amazing mathematical accuracy. To determine the north-south direction, the builders used the constellations Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. The mathematical accuracy is amazing. The individual blocks of stone are cut with an accuracy of 0.2 millimeters. A razor blade just about fits between the rows of stones. The foundations of the pyramid also impress with their astonishing accuracy. They deviate a maximum of 16 millimeters from the horizontal. This is an extraordinary achievement considering that the lower edge length is about 230 meters. The right angles in the corners are masterfully and precisely worked. They are so precise that even with laser-assisted technology as it is available today, it would not be possible to work on them more precisely. And now imagine that these feats were accomplished by a people who, when the foundation stone of the pyramid was laid, archaeologists say did not yet know the benefits of a wheel. 
Even more surprising is that, contrary to all expectations, the pyramid does not have four sides. In truth, the Cheops pyramid has eight sides. This makes it the only Egyptian pyramid that has this peculiarity. However, this peculiarity is rarely seen in other buildings or projects. Only at sunrise or sunset of the equinox can one see the eight sides from the air. This feature of the Great Pyramid of Giza is only visible on two days a year. Only part of the interior of the Great Pyramid of Giza has been explored. A chamber in the middle of the pyramid has now been found with the help of digital scanners, but nobody has entered it yet. There are tons of secret doors and secret passages in the pyramid to stop any Tomb Raiders. It's quite possible that all the treasures of the pyramid will never be discovered. Many people believe that the Pyramid of Giza is not only the largest, but also the tallest pyramid in the world, but that's wrong. Larger in volume is the Great Pyramid of Cholula in Mexico. Its base is 160,000 square meters, three times the size of the base of the Pyramid of Giza. Of course, the Pyramid of Giza is incredibly impressive, but this wasn't the first pyramid built in ancient Egypt. The first pyramid was the Step Pyramid of Pharaoh Djoser of Saqqara. Up to the time of his reign, the tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs were flat. It was built about 4,700 years ago, is 62.5 meters high, and is the ninth tallest of all Egyptian pyramids. A special feature is that it does not have a square base, as most of the others do. So there you have it. Today we've revealed several secrets about the Egyptian pyramids that you likely didn't know. As a side note, did you also know that there has never been any confirmation that the pyramids were ever used as tombs? Yes, historians would like you to believe that the pyramids are the eternal resting place of former Egyptian leaders. However, based on what archaeologists have found inside the pyramids, not a single one of them has ever been home to a mummy of any sort. The only mummies and pharaohs have been found outside the pyramids. Thus, this poses many more questions than answers. How did this theory come to be? And if the pyramids are not giant burial chambers, what purpose did they actually serve? Unfortunately, due to the burning of the Library of Alexandria, we will likely never know for sure what the pyramids would have been used for, nor will we ever find out how they were truly built. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. There are so many rumors and so much speculation surrounding the pyramids that it can be difficult to know what is true and what isn't. Have you ever visited the pyramids? Would you like to visit them? How do you think the pyramids were built? Write us your opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching. Now click on one of the extra videos on your screen and watch another exciting video. If you like this one, please give us a thumbs up. And to never miss new videos again, click subscribe and we'll see you again soon.